think of a high-end carbon fiber wheel set, and if you've been around a sport for 20 or 30 years, then lightweight is likely a name that will spring to mind. And in more recent years, they've become a regular sight in the pro peloton once again, thanks to Ineos Grenadiers choosing them. And last year, the company launched these, the brand new Obermeyer Evo. It's their lightest disc brake only, tubeless compatible, all carbon fiber wheel set with a claim weight of just 1230 grams. Definitely putting them up there with some of the lightest wheels you can currently buy. That low weight though, comes with a fairly hefty price tag. They start at just over six and a half thousand pounds, while these, the Schwartz edition, which gets you all black logos and ceramic bearings in the hubs, will cost you just over seven thousand pounds. So extremely lightweight, extremely expensive, but what are they like to ride? Well, in this video, I'm gonna put them through the ultimate test and try and bag a Strava KOM with them. So, let's dive in. Way back in the 90s, Lightweight was a real pioneer and innovator of carbon fiber wheel technology. And they looked distinctive back then, and they still look distinctive and radical today. And we have a full carbon fiber construction. So we start with a rim, which is a 48 millimeter deep V section rim with carbon fiber laid over an active foam core inside. And this cutaway really shows the manufacturing and the technology within the rim. So a V shaped rim, then fat carbon spokes into full carbon fiber hubs, front and rear. And these wheels have been put on a diet to make them as light as they possibly can be. So we have a new carbon fiber layup on the rims and the front hub alone has shed a whopping 60 grams just in the hub alone to make them a claimed 1230 grams. So definitely up there with some of the lightest carbon fiber disc brake tubeless compatible wheel set. And while they might look fairly old fashioned, they have been updated in a number of ways. So now disc brake ready, tubeless compatible, and the rims are wider than ever before, although still narrow by the standards of other carbon fiber wheel sets currently available. So the internal rim width is 18.4 millimeters, while the external width is 24. Now for comparison, a Zip 303 Firecrest has a 25 millimeter internal rim width, which is wider than the entire rim here. But even so, these are compatible with a tire from 23 up to 32 mil wide, and these, for reference, are a 30 mil wide tubeless tire. And they are a tubeless ready wheel set using a hooked rim design. So you can run normal clincher tires with inner tubes if you want, or tubeless tires as we have here. So that's the tech taken care of. Now let's hit the road and see how they perform and what they're like to ride. While the design of these wheels is no longer as cutting edge as it was back in the 90s, the performance out here on the road they're still highly impressive. They still feel extremely fast, very responsive, and loads of stiffness when you're climbing your favorite coals. The speed they give the bike and offer you as a rider in a straight line is very good. No issues there at all. So I've been riding these wheels for the last couple of months in the winter in the UK, which probably isn't the perfect time of year for riding a very expensive carbon fiber wheel set. But it has highlighted just how tough and durable these wheels are. That you can ride them through the grittiest, grimiest conditions on roads full of potholes and covered in grit and they shake it all off just fine. So definitely not a delicate summer only wheel set. You can ride them year round. But that's probably not the main reason for buying these wheels. It's the performance. And my goodness me, these wheels feel amazing. The one downside, which has always been a downside of the V-shaped rim profile, is when encountering crosswinds and blustery conditions. They're not as stable, not as sure-footed as rounder U-shaped carbon rims. But where these wheels really shine is on the climbs. And that's where the low weight and a high level of stiffness really come to the fore. They've got a really punchy character. The massive stiffness that the unique carbon fiber construction gives ensures they have the most incredible responsive nature. 
they just feel insanely good on the climbs you'll find yourself out of the saddle punching through the gears punching for the summit chasing the KOMs talking of chasing KOMs should we see what these wheels are really capable of with a really fast rider on the bike and see if we can get a Strava KOM right to find out how good these wheels really are on a climb this is Dave and he's basically a faster fitter version of me and you've got a bit of a reputation for bagging KOMs around <laughs> the cocktails, haven't you? Uh, I suppose, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very modest. <laughs> so the plan is, there's a climb near to Dave that he's going to try and get the Strava KOM on. And hopefully these wheels will give him the advantage he needs to get the, uh, the good time you need. Fingers now, crossed. You have quite a few KOMs in this area, but not this one. And it's a, a personal climb, so you could near where you live yeah this is my back doorstep uh and yeah it has been fully re since i've uh, had my quickest attempt on it thus far uh so yeah i'm really interested to see what difference these wheels are going to make what difference the tarmac will make it's quite a sheltered climb so whatever the conditions are today shouldn't make too much of a difference the tarmac is greasy and wet but we're running 30 mil tubeless so i should have plenty of grip uh, I'm genuinely intrigued to see what's going to happen. Yeah, so am I. The conditions are far from ideal, as Dave says. It's, um, it's drizzly at the moment, um, <laughs> fine rain. Um, it's not that warm, but it's not too windy up here, like I say, quite sheltered. Yeah. But the tarmac is brand new. But down the bottom of the climb, there's um, a couple of tree corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite steep, yeah. as that sign suggests, 12%. <laughs> um, that's the average gradient as well. It peaks to a bit more than that. We'll put the details of the climb down below <laughs> so you can check it out. So it should be an interesting challenge. Yeah. So should we do it? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do crack it. on. So Dave, how was it? You certainly look fast. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm fully feeling the off season. Uh, I'm definitely doing strength work at the moment. Note all the excuses down now. It's December. It's not the best time of doing uh, any sort of KOM or hill climb. Yeah. July would be preferable, somewhere warmer, Portugal perhaps. Yeah, but... That would be nice. Yeah, move this climb to Calpe and we'd be there. But no, uh, so I am two kilos to the worst, even if uh, the bike is sublime. Uh, it, did it feel it right? It did feel like my lungs were burning, uh, you know, whereas usually you kind of feel a little bit more comfortable. You're always on the edge when you're doing a climb and going for the, going for the best time. But uh, yeah, the, uh, whether my legs weren't quite feeling as punchy because I'm in sort of strength work season, I don't know. But um, we'll have to wait until the time comes out. You never know. Sometimes the easy ones uh, sometimes are the quickest ones, you know, but okay. it didn't feel, um, didn't feel amazing. <laughs> okay, so I've got the time here. You've not actually seen the time yet, just no. uploaded. So the time to beat was two minutes and 38 seconds. And you did it in, uh. drum roll please, <laughs> two minutes and 52 seconds. Ooh. Oh, that's close. So you're now a second. So you moved up the leaderboard, yeah. but not quite to the, uh, the top so, step of the podium. A, P a PB even in a PB? off season, I will, uh, I'll take that actually, that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, that is a chunk of time to find still. So uh, I, I believe it's uh, Rory who's top. So Rory, if you're watching, <laughs> <laughs> well, come, come March, it will be mine. So maybe there'll be a part two to this uh, hill climb conquest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So unfortunately you didn't get a time. You look fast. How were the wheels? What are your final thoughts on the uh, wheels? The wheels were amazing. Um, when you really, you know, because I'm not a light climber, I'm probably 74 and a bit kilos now, so I use a lot of upper body and put a lot of strain through a set of wheels. So, and these just were sublime. There was no movement. You know, occasionally with a maybe a lesser grade set of wheels, you might get a bit of disc rub where the wheel's moving. Nothing like that. Um, yeah, super quick because it's a, 
there's a little bit of a roll into this climb and yeah they were they felt rolling so smooth into it um yeah put the, give me these wheels in in march <laughs> i reckon we could do a take two on this and uh yeah these these would be the wheels to do it on for sure so watch your space then yeah, so the wheels are fast uh dave isn't fast not today <laughs> but we'll come back and revisit that um in the summer 100 percent. unfortunately they didn't quite get the kom but my goodness me he gave it a bloody good shot didn't he very impressive as these wheels are so let's round up this review with my verdict and conclusion. The massive stiffness and super low weight are the key takeaways from these brand new Obermeyer Evo wheels. If you like climbing, big mountains or steep gradients, then these wheels really impress. The performance on climbs is just out of this world. They're perhaps not the most aero, most stable in crosswinds compared to rounder, more aero wheels, but for climbing performance, that responsive character when you're sprinting out of the saddle these wheels are very, very impressive. And when you talk about value for money, it's not just a price alone, because yes, there are cheaper carbon wheel sets. You could, for example, buy a set of Zip 303S wheels for every day of the week for the price of these wheels alone. But if you want a single wheel set that builds on decades of heritage and expertise, and you buy into a lightweight story, then you won't be disappointed with these at all. Okay, that's all for now. If you want to see some more bike reviews, then check on this video up here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button down here. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all again very soon.